joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show right now from the Golf Channel, Brandel Shambleig joining me here on the program. Uh, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Yeah, nice, uh, nice to be here. Always uh, fun listening to you, Rich, uh, out here at the Masters. I can't think of a better place to be if you're a golfer. So, I mean, or a human being on planet Earth. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> there you go. There <laughs> I mean, you go. <laughs> what a place! What a place! So, uh, what, what, what? Is, who, so let's start with this. For those who may not know, who is Charlie Hoffman? Who is this young man who's in the? Uh, he's uh, he's a better player than you would imagine. Since I would imagine most uh, people not outside of golf don't know his name. He hasn't done much in major championships. As a matter of fact, the best finish he's ever had is 27th in the Masters, uh, and he's only played the Masters once. But amongst his peers, he's known as a very good driver of the golf ball. Hits it long, hits it straight. Uh, he's got a certain flair for the game, but it just hasn't shown up in major championships. Uh, primarily because he's not that good a putter. Uh, but you wouldn't have known it today. Yeah, I mean, he had a, a great round, and after the round, he said a five under's uh, great anywhere, but obviously d a day one of the Masters is the perfect place to be five under, and now Justin Rose is tied at five under with two more holes to play. He's on 17 right now. What will Hoffman go through overnight thinking about that he has a first-round lead or a share of it or perhaps right around that lead at the Masters? What's going to go through his temples this evening? Randall. It's impossible not to think about the inevitability of uh, if you were to continue on with the type of golf that he played today and how it would change your life. Uh, an invitation for life to come back to the Masters, uh, the Masters dinner, a major champion. Um, your life would change in uh, in unimaginable ways. But uh, but he's also a veteran. He's been out here a long time, and he knows that a first round lead. And there's only been one first round leader in the last 30 years that the Masters go on and carry it to victory. So he would know some of that, if not all of that, and know uh, that he's a long way from the finish line. What did you What did you go through after you led the 99 Masters, <laughs> had a piece of the lead after the first round? You know, I uh, it was a very enjoyable night. I had all my friends here. Um, we had, you know, a nice dinner from Texas. Uh, everybody brought barbecue Mexican food, and it was, listen, just being here is a privilege. It doesn't matter if you're a 21-year-old superstar or, uh, middle-aged professional golfer as I was when I first played here to shoot uh, 69. Listen, there's hardly a day goes by in professional golf that somebody doesn't bring it up to me, and I didn't win the damn thing. You know, I just <laughs> let it after one round, and I've got lots of crystal and glasses and stuff that they give you if you do that. Uh, but uh, it's a special place, and you feel some sort of validation when you play well here. Well, you, you've you've written about your experience, uh, and and you mentioned about the Augusta mind games that gets played. Again, the, the mental part of the game is just so crucial, just like any major sport, but in particular with golf, having to calm the nerves and just turn off, just take a shot of Novocaine to the head in a way. What, what about Augusta that plays in the mind in a way that just doesn't with other venues? Well, because there is a, there's a series of par fives on the back nine. You've already alluded to 15, Justin Rose getting his birdie there, but uh, they goad you into taking chances. You know, you try to get up and play a bold line at 13, but you know if you don't if you if you don't pull it off, you could go into the creek and make a bogey or a double. But it's so exciting to try the shot because every shot here has historical press uh, context to it. So you're excited to try it, and then once you hit it, you're then asked to hit a high cut off of a, a lie that makes you want to hit a low draw. And if you miss it, there's water. So there's so much technical precision involved and such a fine line between success and failure. And then there's the reward that you get for taking a bold play and pulling it off. And everybody knows every shot and every, every situation. Everybody does about Augusta national. Uh, I dare say amongst the professional golfers, uh, it is the most evocative major championship. Brandon Chambly of the golf channel joining me here on the rich Eisen show. And maybe that's the one that's why, uh, uh, that's the one that McElroy is currently missing for a career Grand Slam. What 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 are his chances to actually complete that Grand Slam this weekend, Brandel? Uh, you know, I I said at the uh, beginning of the week, I I I don't. You know, he's positioned as the favorite. I, I think uh, I don't think he's the favorite. I, I said I didn't think he was the favorite. Um, his 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 game doesn't quite fit up or match up very well with Augusta. He uh, he has a tendency to miss left when he misses it. And a left miss at Augusta National is dead. Uh, and one of the things that will hurt you just as much as a left miss at Augusta is the fear of missing left. So you play a more timid line on holes where you should be bold. He's not great around the greens. He's not a great scrambler, and he's not a real good fast greens putter. 
what he is is capable of blowing fields away when there's not as big a penalty for a missed tee ball, when fairways and, and the golf course is kind of soft and the greens are not 14 on the stent meter, they're 11 or 12. Uh, and that, uh, the talent that he has, will blow you away. But Augusta isn't a great fit. Having said that, he's got his whole career to play one golf course to complete the career grand slam. Right. I, don't, I don't doubt he'll pull it off. So who is the favorite in your estimation? Uh, Bubba Watson. I can't even imagine... Uh, anybody that could beat Bubba Watson, if Bubba Watson played good, not great. Bubba Watson can cut corners because he's a left-handed golfer, and it's much easier to cut the ball a great distance off of the tee than it is to draw the ball. So right-handers are at a disadvantage uh, compared to Bubba Watson. That combined with his length and his creativity and the fact that he's probably the best lag putter in golf, make him almost unbeatable on this golf course. Do I get credit with you, Brandel? Because we've never spoken before. Do I get credit with you having gone six full minutes in this conversation without mentioning Tiger Woods? Yes, you do. Thank yes, you. you do. Well, now uh, I've just done it. Noted. Uh, noted. Thank you. Uh, um, you know, he has a way of popping up and being relevant with every conversation. And there it is. Um, but, uh, but you're right. Bubba, Rory, they're compelling uh, stories in and of themselves. And I sometimes think, well, I don't think I know that it's a disservice to so many other players because of uh, of the interest that is that is there for Tiger, and rightly so. But so many stories don't get told because we spend so much time talking about Tiger. So can I can I ask you? Yeah, about now absolutely. Right, now, now it's that, appropriate. That, that's what I did. Is I sort of uh, that's my caveat. I was my that was <laughs> that my was way clever. in. That was that was my entry point for for <laughs> Tiger, who bogeyed one. <laughs> Uh, the, just nine weeks off. I mean, who who comes back at, at at Augusta, right? I mean, he has to at least know that he's physically ready and mentally ready. Brandel, do you doubt that? Well, I don't doubt that he's physically ready. Uh, he said that, you know, he said, well, whatever. He's had over two months, so uh, you know, I don't know that he had said his injury wasn't that bad when he left. So I don't doubt that he's physically ready. I I can't imagine how he would be technically ready to ask to answer all the questions that you, that you need to be able to answer at Augusta National. It wasn't just his short game that was cluttered up when he left. It was every other part of his game. Uh, and a lot of that, I think, was contributing to his bad back. Uh, golf needs him. He's, uh, he's great for the game. He brings eyeballs. Never seen anybody play golf like him. Uh, but I would be, uh, I'd be surprised if, uh, if he made the cut this week. Hmm. And uh, perhaps when it's all said and done, when the jacket does get slipped on somebody, whether it's new or for a, a second time, and then they turn the lights off in Butler Cabin on Sunday night, wouldn't it be amazing if the shot of the tournament still belongs to Jack Nicholas from the par three tournament on Wednesday? How incredible was that, Brandel? Well, again, you know, I mean, Augusta starts uh, with the line, a tradition unlike any other, and that's, that's part of what they're talking about uh, when they use that line. You know, they, they have, since the very beginning, um, tried to uh, incorporate a less formal atmosphere. And, and even though in the world of big money and the importance of major championships, they still try to convey that. That was Bobby Jones. It was meant to be a gathering of his buddies. And it was the first ever four-round event, you know, or four-day event, I should say. All of them used to be played in three days. Mm -hmm. He wanted everybody to take their time, take a deep breath, and get to know one another. And that's, uh, that's what the Par 3 contest does. It lets us see the best golfers in the world being human, having fun. And it was great to see Jack Nicklaus make a hole-in-one yesterday. At age 75. Aced How about it. that? It's incredible. How about that? I don't, it's, it is incredible. Thanks for chiming in uh, on the program, Brandel. I appreciate it. Is, it, it is a pleasure. Thank uh, you. Nice, nice, joining you, nice joining you, and I enjoy listening to you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have you back on. Brandel Shambly on the Golf Channel. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.